Okay, it's time to start the lecture. So today uh, we will talk about uh, more for the formulation of the Hino Markov model. It is based on the uh, EM algorithm. And uh, I will also touch some of the overview of the EM algorithm uh, for Hino Markov model. And uh, also uh, explaining about the four steps to uh, the formulate the uh, HMM problem. And also today's the uh, uh, coding assignment to uh, release date. So I will finish my uh, lecture a little bit earlier, and then we'll spend the explanation uh, of the coding assignment too. Okay, so uh, the, let's uh, the discuss about the, the today's uh, the main part, uh, HMM formulation. So um, from this lecture, we will spend uh, additionally uh, two lectures, so totally three lectures, and then uh, providing the formulation uh, of the hidden Markov model. There are, I'll say, the several masses, not so many, but there are several masses that uh, I uh, are providing with you guys. Um, and the, uh, I also want to mention, because some of them may feel like now everything is uh, moving to the end-to-end. Uh, -end. So why uh, the, the we uh, the have to study HMM more? Yeah, it's right. The HMM formulation is more like in a classical side now. But the, the, I spent a couple of times, especially last lecture, uh, that the some of the end-to-end -end system like a CTC and RN transistor are actually quite similar formulation uh, in terms of the uh, considered the hard alignment and the uh, consider the uh, the forward backward algorithm and so on. So this one I particularly focus on the uh, HMM formulation, but this actually is the uh, fundamental formulation for the. CTC and the RN transducer. So uh, the, please make sure to understand this part. And another part, uh, probably some of the uh, uh, lectures, uh, people may skip the detail of the HMM formulation, but here I try to provide the detailed formulation. And why? Of course, you know, if we only know the algorithm, uh, the, you can implement HMM. But I just want to provide uh, the, uh, some kind of math behind and uh, how people deriving it. Because I am expecting you guys not only just uh, the implementing the existing algorithm, but uh, the, I like you guys to also develop new algorithm. Uh, other uh, the, the, uh, the, the researcher or developer and so on. And my experience to do that, if we try to make a new algorithm, we actually have to understand the current algorithm in the formulation, and then we can safely extend it. So based on my experience, I try to kind of uh, uh, providing a detailed formulation as much as possible. Although I also try to kind of visualize uh, how to uh, derive the equation uh, with some kind of a slides. Uh, so that the, the, uh, I hope you guys can uh, the fully uh, understand the algorithm and so on. That's uh, the, what I am kind of thinking to uh, try to uh, the, make some efforts uh, for this section. And for this part, particularly, uh, we focus on HMM. Uh, so this means that we are focused on the acoustic modeling part. But again, make sure that the similar formulations are applied to the end-to-end -end systems. And previously, I kind of uh, the, the make some uh, formulation like a CTC, RN transducer, hidden Markov model, and then deriving the equation. However, I did not mention anything about the training, learning, model parameters, and so on. However, to uh, make this kind of model to be uh, the learn, uh, that we actually have to set the parameters and we have to estimate the parameters, right? 
So uh, to uh, make some more clear distinction of uh, this one is training problem, I kind of uh, uh, the set the uh, parameter index uh, additionally to the function, uh, probabilistic function. And then generally, as you, as you see how to estimate a parameter, people generally using the conditional maximum likelihood try to estimate the parameters so that this uh, conditional likelihood, posterior distribution uh, becomes maximum uh, the given the data. And this, this is the, uh, the uh, entire all kind of our, uh, the problems, including a CTC, entrance, HMM, or even attention-based approaches. But here, again, we focus on the HMM. So this means that, that we only focus on the uh, acoustic model part, this part, PO given L, and uh, again, extend this to uh, the explicitly uh, the providing the parameter theta. So uh, today's uh, talk is starting from uh, this distribution. However, for simplicity, I kind of omit the uh, dependency of the phony. So many cases, uh, the, uh, this, uh, the, my case, uh, many cases uh, following the lectures, I just providing P or given theta, but please understand that this is a uh, given uh, the aphonium sequence uh, and so on. Okay, so this is a kind of clarification of our target. And then uh, the, I will uh, the, uh, introduce the four steps for the EM algorithm. So this is the, uh, uh, not the algorithm itself. This is the formulation step. And the, this uh, the formulation is not only for the hidden Markov model. All the uh, models, uh, when we try to estimate based on the EM algorithm, we actually using this four step to uh, build the uh, algorithm. Uh, a formulator the algorithm and deriving the other uh, algorithm. So one is introducing the latent variable and second is to set the complete data likelihood. Third is to uh, providing the auxiliary function. And finally, uh, we also are the, the solving the parameter estimation part. Okay. And then the other uh, first questions uh, you guys may have is, why we use the EM algorithm. So this is because uh, we can actually solve the problem uh, by using the EM algorithm. And then the, the, why we actually cannot solve it easily uh, because we actually introduce some of the latent variable. In this case, in our kind of a previous cases, the latent variable is the uh, alignment sequence that I mentioned before, right? As I said that the alignment can be any passes and we cannot observe which pass uh, the actually model uh, is kind of uh, the, uh, the selected. So we have to treat this one as a probabilistic variable and then we actually consider this as a more in the machine learning term, uh, latent variable. And this one is again, not only for hidden Markov model, a uh, Gaussian mixture model or other problems, uh, we actually using this kind of a formulation. And then the EM algorithm is one of the uh, powerful solution uh, to uh, the iteratively uh, solve uh, this uh, the, the uh, problem. So the keyword is iteratively uh, solving uh, this uh, problem. So in this cases, theta dash is actually the parameter estimated in the previous iteration. And then the, we try to kind of estimate the new uh, parameter. So we always have to set some initial values and then uh, estimating uh, this uh, parameter. And there are several quick maths of why the EM algorithm is uh, the, the used uh, for uh, solving this uh, problem. Uh, 
we actually want to solve this one, maximum likelihood estimation. But in this case, if we kind of introduce a latent variable, it is very difficult to solve. Uh, it is uh, the almost impossible to solve. So instead, uh, we actually are using this uh, the auxiliary function. And then uh, the, the, we try to optimize uh, the uh, model parameters in terms of this uh, the auxiliary function rather than the uh, likelihood. But this actually has a good property. So auxiliary function uh, is uh, defined by uh, this uh, the, the equations. Um, first, this part is the uh, uh, likelihood distribution, joint distribution of the observation and the uh, the latent variable, and the this is uh, the uh, the posterior distribution of the latent variable, and then we define this auxiliary function. And by using the Jensen's inequality, uh, I skip this uh, the, the, uh, derivation, but please check some of the, uh, uh, the textbook and so on. Uh, after the Jensen's inequality, we actually have a, this kind of a nice uh, representation. So uh, the uh, log, log likelihood is a lower bound of the, uh, the, the auxiliary function. And then uh, the if, for example, we find the uh, uh, auxiliary function, it's better than uh, the, the previous iteration. And then the, it's actually uh, close to the, uh, the uh, uh, log likelihood. It's close to the log likelihood, but it doesn't uh, the, uh, the, the satisfy that it's reaching to the, this other uh, parameter. But anyway, this other uh, iterative algorithm is tractable. So people are using the EM algorithm. And the uh, EM algorithm is uh, actually quite good behavior. Uh, and I actually uh, 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 made this slide by comparing with the back propagation. Oh, another way of, of solving this uh, the, the equation is of course back propagation which probably now many people here are more familiar uh, with back propagation than uh, EM algorithm. But EM algorithm is actually quite a nice property. First, always likelihood is increased. If we do the EM algorithm, always likelihood is increased. Uh, you guys also the, the work on the I guess many of you here are also working on the uh, neural network and then uh, performing the back propagation, right? Is the loss function always kind of decreased? Sometimes actually crazy behavior happens, right? Um, the, this is uh, the mostly due to the, uh, uh, some wrong optimization setup and so on. Uh, if it doesn't, uh, if it is not appropriate, set, it's actually uh, the, doesn't satisfy this kind of uh, uh, the behavior theoretically. But the EM algorithm theoretically uh, uh, guarantees that likelihood is always increased. So please uh, the, the, uh, remember this. And then uh, the coding assignment too is actually uh, mm -hmm. the implementing the uh, this uh, maximum likelihood based hidden Markov model. And if uh, the likelihood uh, becomes decreased, uh, it's uh, the, not the fault of the algorithm. It's comp definitely uh, the something uh, that your fault. So <laughs> it's actually easy to debug. And the uh, EM algorithm is iterative. So this means that the, the, uh, it's uh, depend on the initialization. And also it goes to the local optimum. However, compared with the back propagation, back propagation, if we uh, make some kind of effort in the optimization, we actually could uh, the, the escape from the uh, local optimum. <laughs> but the EMR goes actually cannot escape from that. 
it's just try to go to the local optimum point. So if we set the wrong initialization parameters and there are local optimum uh, the close to this uh, the, the initial, wrong initialization, EM algorithm just stuck this kind of local optimization point. Uh, and it is not easy to actually uh, the escape from this local optimization. And another part of the EM algorithm is that the easy to be distributed. Especially E step part is uh, that can be easily distributed. And it used to be, uh, for example, the, the, uh, the, we use a uh, uh, hundred or uh, the, the thousand CPUs to distribute this uh, the E step uh, part and then computing at M step and so on. So, actually, speech recognition people uh, have been uh, familiar with the distributed computing in the very beginning uh, because EM algorithm is quite good for the distributed computing. Okay, so uh, these are uh, more like uh, uh, the, the uh, property uh, of the EM algorithm. And then now I move to uh, the formulation part uh, of the EM algorithm. And for this other uh, formulation part, uh, please remember this other uh, fourth step. Again, uh, the, uh, uh, introducing latent variables uh, and so on. Again, this part, if you are uh, solving the, uh, the other way, uh, you can still using this step to uh, the formulate the program. So first, let's introduce a latent variable. But actually, we spend a lot of time for the latent variable in our cases, which is a hidden Markov model. So I'm mostly skipping the explanation about this. But anyway, in our cases, a latent variable is the, uh, the uh, alignment information. And the alignment information is uh, the specified by the states. Uh, and the uh, phoneme and the, 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 the internally, we have several states and so on. So this is actually uh, the discrete uh, the variable. And then the sequence of the discrete variable showing the, eight, the, the sum of the HMM index. And then the, uh, the, we also the discussed that the, the length is basically same with the input length. And the HMM also has the other uh, the property uh, which is, uh, as name shows, it is based on the Markov process. So, for example, this state sequence will be uh, the factorized uh, with the chain rule, right? And the, in the general first order, uh, the Markov process, hidden Markov process, we eliminate almost all the history and it is just only depending on the previous history. So this is a kind of a, 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 a property uh, or a constraint uh, of this uh, hidden mark model latent variable. By the way, with this property, we can make this problem solve, solvable. <laughs> Otherwise it is very difficult to solve the, uh, this uh, the, uh, the HMM. And I will discuss a bit more about the um, uh, HMM uh, property. So again, in our case, most uh, the, the mostly we only using the left to right hidden Markov model. So in this case, actually the uh, our kind of a, uh, the state transition has a three types of the. Uh, uh, three types of the uh, cases. One is initial part. We just, you know, are starting from this initial state. So uh, this is just uh, the, the, the first time of the state is uh, the sum state. And most of the cases, it is uh, the first uh, the HM state one or something like that, okay? And uh, this is uh, not a transition, just the initial state. 
So this is represented by some kind of other uh, variable. And in our cases, in my cases, I use a pi. Okay. And the other is staying to the current state. In this case, uh, or some people also call it self loop case. In this case, uh, the uh, the the pre from previous state we move not moving to the uh, other state we just move to the uh, the, the same state and this is uh, the, the written as a transition probability of AII and if we move to the next state uh, we will uh, the have our uh, the the um, uh, pro transition probability of uh, AIJ. But uh, this is very simple, uh, mostly uh, the, just the kind of uh, staying or moving to the next states, that's it, because it is left to right. But as a formulation, we, for example, uh, the consider all possible uh, the um, uh, state uh, in the formulation, but they practically uh, this kind of a, a part of the set, uh, transition is not allowed. Huh? Uh, so that uh, the just staying or uh, just moving to the next state. That is uh, actually our uh, practical uh, the HMM uh, the problem. So please uh, the, remember this kind of uh, the constraint. And the, uh, one note is that the, the, I mentioned that the, the, uh, the, the usually we set the, uh, the three states per phoneme, but a homework one state for phoneme, right? Yeah. Um, to simplify the homework, we actually using one state for phoneme. But uh, my explanation uh, that it's actually generally people using a three state or some more states. So my explanation, I am uh, the, the using more general case that I have. We have a, a more than one state uh, per phoneme uh, and so on. Okay, um, just I kind of explain about the constraint of the latent variable, but anyway, the, the, I just want to mention the first step is introducing the latent variable. And this one is a little bit obvious for, for you guys because I spend a lot of time for explaining about the alignment, uh, but we have other latent variable like a Gaussian mixture and a component and so on. This can also be, by the way, uh, the, uh, the similarly uh, the the, uh, the uh, formulated uh, based on the uh, this uh, latent variable representation. And then second, uh, we will actually introduce the, uh, uh, another term of the complete data likelihood. So uh, complete data likelihood is actually important. It, well, I would say that this is a joint probability of the observation and the latent variable. So why people call it this complete data? Because if we know the observation and the latent variable is also uh, the, if this is uh, the also uh, the observable, we can make this situation as a complete data. So this is uh, the, the, uh, not actually exactly true. S is the latent variable, but if we are uh, making this as uh, a joint probability, uh, we can regarding this as a complete data. So that's why we call this uh, the, the distribution as a complete data uh, likelihood. And then the, the, uh, the given this uh, the com uh, joint distribution uh, complete, uh, complete data uh, likelihood, uh, the likelihood uh, we will uh, the, the, uh, proceed with uh, the more uh, formulation. However, uh, please note that this of O and the S both are uh, the sequence. So just directly uh, the, uh, dealing with this is very difficult. It is very difficult to provide in the, for example, actual distribution for this P or given S. So how to uh, make this uh, the PO give uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, joint probability tractable? Uh, like what we have done before, uh, we use the uh, factorization and the conditional independence assumption. So basically, conditional independence assumption and the factorization are, are the appear everywhere 
uh, in this formulation. So I will not go through the detail about the uh, derivation, but I, I just want to uh, the emphasize that from P, P O uh, the S uh, distributions, this is a, a sequence uh, uh, variables. So it is very difficult to uh, the derive, but the final equation is actually written as a simple factorized form. So here we use actually uh, the product rule, uh, the product rule again, a conditional independence assumption, and then uh, the deriving it. And if later, please check this kind of slide carefully, you know, each other part, how we kind of solve this one. But basically, uh, this is uh, the similar to what we have done, but having a more uh, the variable so that it looks complicated. But anyway, uh, the, after this kind of treatment, uh, we can uh, factorize this distribution as a simple distribution of oh, apologize that I uh, the, missed the P here. Sorry about that. So uh, anyway, the, we kind of are making this uh, distribution simplified. And then uh, the, the next kind of uh, uh, the, the item, uh, next action is how we make this uh, distribution to be more actual, uh, practical uh, problem. How we set uh, the uh, actual function form for this uh, distribution. So we actually have uh, three types of the distributions in the previous uh, the equations. This uh, P or given ST theta and the ST given ST minus one and the S one, these three distributions. And now it is very simple. So we can actually set some actual distribution and then sort of uh, try to kind of uh, uh, make this problem tractable. And there are two options. Uh, one is using the neural network or some other kind of uh, uh, the, the functions, complicated functions. And then uh, the, the, uh, the providing the, uh, this each distribution. Uh, uh, in this scenario, we actually cannot use the EM algorithm and we have to use the back propagation. But if we set an appropriate function, we can actually solve this equation. So this is the, uh, the, the uh, kind of a basic uh, the com uh, the concept of the EM algorithm. I will set a lot of appro approximation later. <laughs> But the purpose is that we start, we can actually solve this equation. Okay, let's first uh, focus on the two of the distribution uh, among these three, because these three are, uh, two are very uh, similar. Uh, first is this, uh, the PST given ST minus one and S one. This is actually the, uh, the distribution showing the kind of a transition, right? I kind of uh, the previously showing that ST minus one is the previous HMM state and ST is the uh, next uh, the HMM state. And then uh, the, uh, what kind of distribution uh, we should provide? Can we use a Gaussian for this one? Actually, we could use Gaussian. <laughs> it's a not very good idea, but we could use a Gaussian. Probably better to use gamma distribution uh, because uh, each of the, uh, oh no, it is, this is a discrete category. So it's not easy to actually set the Gaussian distribution or discrete uh, the gamma distribution. The answer of uh, the, uh, the, the appropriate distribution in this case is a marginomial distribution. Uh, 
with this uh, that we can actually satisfy the discrete category condition. And then uh, please note that in the multinomial distribution parameter is uh, this uh, the, the uh, uh, a that the uh, listed here, and this uh, satisfies the condition of some uh, satisfy the sum to one condition. So this is a kind of a, uh, the basic um, uh, uh, setup uh, of the multinomial uh, distribution. So state transition is actually uh, the, the I call it the state transition, but this is actually one of the parameters uh, in the multinomial distribution. Okay. And actually the same uh, uh, discussion applied to this uh, initial distribution S1, because this is also categorical. So we can just using the marginal distribution and the setting uh, this kind of uh, uh, the, uh, parameter constraint. Okay, the next uh, the we will move to the uh, actual distribution of uh, this P O T given S T. And then the same question, what kind of distribution is appropriate for this uh, the function? Similar to the previous cases, uh, we actually uh, check the domain. In the previous cases, for example, this is a discrete category, right? So that, uh, that, that we set a multinomial distribution. In this distribution cases, this is MSCC, right? And MSCC is actually not bounded, minus infinity to infinity. So in this case, uh, what kind of distribution is good? Actually Gaussian distribution, yeah. And later we actually uh, extend it to the mixture, uh, Gaussian mixture uh, distribution. And by the way, this P O T given S T, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the distribution that is related to the input is also called emission probability. So I'm sometimes using this name, emission probability, instead of P or T uh, uh, given S T and so on. Okay, then the, uh, the discussion is why Gaussian? It can be anything, right? Uh, Laplace distribution or gamma distribution or Wisha distribution or uh, Dirichlet distribution or Levy distribution or whatever, right? Uh, can you uh, discuss the why uh, that we chose Gaussian here? Yes. Yes, most simple and most common. This implies that it is easy to solve, right? Actually, uh, Gaussian is uh, the easy to solve. This is based on the exponential family, and it is actually uh, the, 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 the um, miracle having a good solution. And uh, by the way, all other uh, the, the distribution, it is very difficult uh, to get to the kind of a solution. Uh, by the way, if we use the power spectrum as OT, uh, which distribution would be good? We can still uh, use Gaussian, but if we're using the power distribution, a uh, power uh, energy, uh, the other uh, uh, feature, which you know, it's not. Not a very bad idea, right? Energy is also very important to get some kind of a, uh, the, the speech uh, information, and it is possible, right? In this case, which distribution should we use? Can someone answer it? Hint, uh, the, the uh, power is uh, the positive, not negative. Exponential is good, but we call it gamma distribution. Yeah. 
gamma distribution uh, is actually, uh, I would say that the similar property to the uh, Gaussian distribution. Uh, I'd say that the gamma distribution is more like uh, the almost same as the, uh, the Gaussian distribution, except that it's actually bounded to the positive. But the gamma distribution is uh, the not symmetric uh, since it is bounded in the one side. So uh, it's actually not a very good property uh, to uh, uh, the, in terms of solving the equation and so on, uh, because mean and median are different. So, but uh, anyway, uh, gamma distribution is actually one of the possible uh, option uh, if the value is non-negative. So this is a basic kind of idea. Uh, this is a basic idea. If we have a, a the domain of the variable, probabilistic variable, we could actually have a, a limited selection of the Gaussian uh, of the uh, distribution, and also another important part is whether it is uh, the, uh, tractable or not. And then the, the most of the cases actually Gaussian gamma multinomial Dirichlet uh, we shot uh, for misses. <laughs> These are exponential family <laughs> and having some kind of other nice properties and other distribution like a Levy distribution and so on are very difficult to deal with. Yeah. So, um, yeah. so just Gaussian distribution is uh, characterized by uh, the first and the second order moment. So is this Gaussian distribution can be uh, Yes. Yes, that uh, it can also capture the second order statistic. This is also a very good property. Yes. Okay, so now I move to the uh, quickly moving to the uh, Gaussian distribution. Um, Gaussian distribution is uh, represented by uh, this kind of a normalization term and exponential and quadratic form. Uh, this is uh, uh, the vector for, uh, uh, form. Uh, the if uh, the, uh, this uh, variable is vector, uh, Gaussian distribution is written uh, with this kind of a form. And, and this is actually a little bit complicated uh, since uh, especially uh, the, this uh, part, uh, variance matrix uh, is very complicated. So uh, actually uh, many cases uh, in the, not only for speech recognition, in many of the pattern recognition cases, people just using the diagonal, uh, the covariance uh, instead of the full covariance. And then we can actually uh, the making, uh, since there is no uh, the, uh, the uh, of diagonal element. So this uh, distribution, is actually uh, the written by the product uh, for each dimension and making this kind of equation very kind of easy to solve. Not only easy to solve, it's actually also reducing the computational cost. So due to that, actually many people are, are using the diagonal uh, covariance uh, Gaussian in the pattern recognition problem. However, uh, the full covariance, of course, have a more parameters, means that it also have a more uh, representation, uh, the, the abilities, uh, right? So uh, that whether we use a diagonal or full, uh, depending on the uh, difficulty of the problem. But uh, generally, if we have a large number of dimensions, and then the, the, uh, the number of parameters and the computational cost of the, uh, the a full covariance uh, becomes very large. So again, uh, say for example, uh, the more than ten dimension, people actually using the uh, diagonal covariance. And the uh, diagonal covariance is actually quite a weak model, I would say. It cannot well capture the data. So this is actually actual MSCC, uh, but only taking the two dimension uh, of the MSCC features. 
and uh, try to uh, the fitting this with a single Gaussian. But it's, uh, it's maybe okay, but it's not very good, right? And then the, uh, the uh, full covariance Gaussian is probably good because it can also tilting the uh, distribution, right? And if we have a more dimensions, this tilting is more kind of powerfully fitting the data. So in this sense, uh, people uh, actually often use, uh, people may also use the full covariance uh, to uh, the, uh, make the uh, power of the, uh, to, to improve the representation power of the Gaussian distribution. However, there is another solution, which is we use the multiple Gaussian to fit uh, this uh, data uh, rather than uh, using the, uh, the full covariance model. So this is more like an engineering solution, but empirically, this uh, multiple Gaussian, we call it Gaussian mixture, is actually uh, the more uh, the, the, uh, having more representation than single diagonal Gaussian. And also the number of parameters are not uh, the, uh, the uh, square or, uh, or quadratic. So it's just kind of linearly increase if we have a, a more number of Gaussians. So due to this kind of reason, uh, the, we use a Gaussian mixture for the fitting uh, of the data. If the uh, dimension, size of the dimension is larger, again, usually over 10, uh, we start to use the Gaussian mixture. And the Gaussian mixture uh, is uh, represented by uh, summation of the single Gaussian distribution with uh, the, the weight, uh, the, the uh, mixture weight. And the uh, mixture weight is uh, the satisfying with some to one condition, okay? This is the, this, uh, the definition of the Gaussian distribution. By the way, it sounds like we should use a Gaussian distribution, right? But it's actually introducing the Gaussian, uh, mix, Gaussian mixture Using the Gaussian mixture means that we actually introduce additional latent variable, uh, which is you know whether this distribution, uh, whether this kind of point is belong to this distribution, distribution, or this distribution, and so on. This is very similar to the alignment problem. Uh, but anyway, uh, if we in, uh, using the Gaussian mixture we actually have an additional latent variable, which we will discuss it later. So then now I want to ask the short quiz. Uh, can you uh, open it? I think I made a, I actually made a short quiz one. Wait a moment. I just make sure that this is correct. Oh, still there's something is wrong. I will try to do, uh, let me, let me wait for a while. I think this one is previous caches. Uh... Looks very weird. Okay. Uh, one more minute.
Okay, uh, please uh, close the poll. Okay, uh, everyone is correct. <laughs> I'm happy about it. <laughs> um, yes, uh, we should use a Gaussian mixture. And each Gaussian is the, 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 uh, the single Gaussian, uh, uh, the uh, diagonal ga Gaussian, okay. Um, this uh, would be the uh, very kind of typical, by the way, mistake. Uh, not the mistake, but the, the, some kind of uh, the, uh, the not completely mistake, but the uh, it's the kind of our, uh, the one of the uh, the issue. Uh, our coding assignment again, we will ask you guys to implement the Gaussian based HMM, and we will extend it to the Gaussian mixture, right? And many students actually using the full covariance <laughs> because the many of the kind of how to say uh, the uh, equations and so on in the everywhere except for the you know other speech recognition or pattern recognition courses uh the, the solving the equation with the, uh, the full covariance so people may just checking this one and then uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, without you know uh, the, the uh, caring about about our instruction and the using the full covariance and found that it is very difficult to estimate uh, this is actually one of the very frequent tips so please avoid it please use the diagonal uh, Gaussian mixture. Uh, please do not do the full covariance, right? Yeah. Okay. So uh, this is a kind of actual distribution part. Uh, but uh, remember that the uh, we uh, also uh, the try to uh, deal with this kind of uh, uh, the uh, all. Uh, the complete data likelihood, and we actually need to uh, deal with another important uh, problem. Uh, this is the uh, the summation over the sequences. So, for example, uh, the, we use the complete data likelihood, and then com we can compute the uh, likelihood by marginalizing with this uh, the, the latent variable, right? Um, this one is a very simple equation, but actually this one cannot be solved uh, the easily. Since uh, this uh, the, the S uh, would be uh, the, the many possibilities. So I just computed, you know, how many variations of S we have. We only have a three state HMM, and we have let's say two hundred uh, the the frames, and then the uh, it's uh, becomes uh, that too many <laughs> uh, the <laughs> uh, the variation. So uh, the unless we can make a quantum computer available, probably it is very difficult to solve this one. I'm not sure quantum computer can also not really handle this kind of problem. And then the uh, we actually have to uh, the deal with uh, this. Uh, the the, uh, the summation uh, over the uh, sequence, and then we will use the forward and the backward algorithm uh, in the uh, the next lecture. And uh, for now, I kind of skipping how to solve it. But the, uh, the I just want to mention that the, the forward backward algorithm is a way to uh, make this kind of uh, avoiding this uh, all possible uh, sequence and so on. However, this summation over the sequence actually will uh, the appear everywhere, even in the formulation part. And every time we have to think about how to avoid it. And then the, uh, the, is, there is a way to, by the way, uh, the avoiding this kind of uh, uh, complicated um, uh, computation. And it's actually using for forward, backward, or any of this kind of problem. And how to avoid this computation? And the answer is uh, distributed property. 
Um, distributive property is a quite simple operation that you guys learn in the beginning, right? Probably it's depend on the curriculum, but in Japan, I first learned this even in the elementary school, although you know, it's not the very uh, the, the generalized one, but the, uh, the, the get, get the first sense of the distributive property in the elementary school, and the more uh, the understand the, the general property of the uh, distributive property in the, uh, the high school or, or beginning of the uh, university. So it's a very, very common uh, the, the, uh, property, right? Uh, However, this is actually helping us. <laughs> Without this other uh, property, we actually cannot deal with the, the sequence. So, uh, or uh, other complicated computations. So distributed property is simple, right? If we have uh, this kind of uh, the, the, the product and the summation form, we can actually write it like this. Maybe this is too simple. This is again, probably I first met in the elementary school. And then, you know, probably more generalized form I met in the uh, high school or later. Uh, this uh, kind of uh, the complicated form. Uh, and the, uh, this is actually quite nice property of avoiding a lot of equations, a lot of computations. And in our cases, actually using this one, so left side, if we just, uh, how to say, uh, the, without using a distributed property to uh, the maker uh, the program, this becomes uh, the two for loop, double for loop of N and M, right? But light side, the light, light side, it's actually uh, the, just uh, the, uh, the uh, twice of the uh, for loop right? Double loop becomes four loop. So it's actually significantly reduces the computational cost. <laughs> yeah, you guys may think that, oh my God, this is so trivial. <laughs> Why is the teacher asking, uh, the, explaining this? But this <laughs> trivial thing, it's super important. <laughs> actually, even uh, the, actually with this property, we can uh, the, avoid the, uh, the summation over the sequence. So yeah, I just <laughs> write the, the algorithm again, you know, <laughs> this is very trivial, but this property uh, is uh, the very important to uh, the, uh, avoid uh, the all uh, possible computation. So by the way, the, the sequence, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the summation is without uh, the distributor property, this for loop becomes kind of nested, 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 and then the computation becomes exponential, right? But that, uh, by using some trick, we can actually find some kind of a, a distributed property, and then the a computation order becomes linear. So this is a trick. So please remember that. Uh, we have to read, uh, yes. <laughs> We have to save the time for the, uh, the coding uh, assignment. So, okay. So let's quickly <laughs> move to the, uh, the next step, auxiliary function. This is still formulation, but it's actually quite important part. So uh, the, in the beginning of my kind of uh, uh, the, 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 the uh, lecture, I mentioned that the, instead of focusing on the likelihood distribution, we are focusing on this uh, auxiliary function Q, right? And the, uh, the, uh, the if uh, the, uh, the just kind of a, uh, the working on the likelihood, uh, we actually cannot well, uh, the, the avoid the, um, the, uh, the summation of a sequence, but this form is actually could avoid the summation of the sequence. So, I will show you that. So the first, uh, this, oh, this one is uh, the uh, complete data likelihood, right? And then as I mentioned that the complete data likelihood is uh, the factorizing with the Gaussian distribution and the, uh, the, the state transition. 
and the uh, initial weight of pi. So now we just kind of uh, the substitute the previous solution to this uh, complete data likelihood. And then we actually can add uh, the have uh, three terms. One is the initial weight uh, related to the initial weight. The other is the transition weight related terms. And the last one is Gaussian. By the way, I explain it with a single Gaussian as an example, and later extend it to the Gaussian mixture. Okay, uh, can we solve this one? It is not still easy because we have a summation of a sequence, summation of a sequence, summation of a sequence. So uh, let's try to avoid this one. So first, uh, initial weight. So basically, I will use this kind of three method. Sequence decomposition, distributed property, sum roof. So first, this S uh, and S1 uh, is a kind of a, the uh, S is the entire sequence, right? And this one is only the beginning of the sense. Uh, the sequence, right? So the rest of the part may not be so important for this computation. So first, we actually decompose the sequence to the S1 and the S2T. Okay, the, I don't do anything, just kind of, you know, uh, the changing the way of writing uh, from S to S1 to S2T so that you guys can kind of clearly now see uh, this kind of a relationship, right? And then after this one, we actually found that summation of S to 2T is only related to this first factor. And this is not related to S1. So we actually can change this uh, summation to like this distributed property. Okay. And then please check this one. This one, if we using the sum rule, we actually cancel this part, right? And then found that we can actually just simply using this equation. Now there is no sequence summation. So by using that, we can actually compute uh, this value. So this is the, uh, uh, the reason uh, we use the auxiliary other uh, function. Okay, by the way, uh, we still want to solve this one, PS1 given O, and this is actually not easy. <laughs> so I will explain it in the next lecture. <laughs> but still good, right? We avoid the summation over the sequence. And then the, uh, the by uh, the, uh, the, the, after that, uh, we actually can uh, solve uh, this problem. And the other uh, state uh, transition, this one is a little bit difficult, uh, complicated, right? T equals two to log ASD and uh, something like that. So, but let's, you know, uh, the, just expand uh, this other uh, summation. And then we have our uh, the, the, the each term, right? S1, S2, ST1, ST, uh, and so on. Now, for example, we just focus on this one. And then uh, the, try to kind of uh, uh, the think about whether we can uh, the, the avoid the summation of the sequence of this one and this one. And this is actually short quiz. So this uh, state of transition is also samely, similarly uh, avoid the summation of a sequence and then uh, the solving this kind of equation. And then to do that, very similar to the previous initial weight, we actually using the three method to uh, finally derive this equation. And then uh, please, uh, the, the already, yes. Uh, the, the, uh, please uh, the, the select which one is uh, the, the appropriate to uh, solve this uh, the state transition.
Do you need more time? <laughs> okay, one more minute. If it is just a uh, large, and if it is you know something the uh, uh, if it is uh, the cap uh, the upper scale, it is medium, and if it is low lower scale, it's mostly just a variable at some time t. And if we have this kind of a specification of the uh, the uh, beginning and the end, this becomes a subsequent. Okay, uh, close the poll. So the answer is actually exactly same as the previous way. Uh, we first use the sequence decomposition. Uh, this is just how the say uh, the D like this state sequence uh, from t minus two, t one minus one, t, t plus one to t. Uh, this is because uh, these are also st minus one plus st uh, and st. So we only kind of uh, uh, extract the variable that's related to this one. And then uh, this subsequent summation is actually only related to this uh, the distribution. And we are actually using a sum rule to again eliminate the summation over the sequence. And the result is like that. Uh, there is no summation over the sequence. And again, uh, this part uh, looks very simplified, but this part, PST minus one SD is actually not easy to obtain in this moment. So I will explain it in the next week. The last one is Gaussian. And actually this is the uh, homework. <laughs> so uh, please enjoy uh, the <laughs> equation. Yes, but uh, the, just want to mention that this is exactly the same as this way. Okay, so I hope you guys can you know uh, the uh, the solve it uh, correctly. And the result is like this. Again, we can avoid the summation over the sequence. Uh, and the, uh, the, the result is quite a uh, the, the simple uh, form. So this is a summary uh, of the uh, auxiliary function part. Uh, all the summation over the sequence is actually uh, removed in the auxiliary function. So we can actually uh, the, the deal with uh, this function now. But the, the, again, the, the, the we, this part, uh, this part, this part, I kind of uh, write that the gamma, xi, and uh, the gamma t, and so on. These are not easy to obtain, and we actually uh, have to wait for the next week. The last part uh, the, uh, is uh, the, we actually, uh, the, the, given this, uh, the, the, the auxiliary function, uh, we can just 
uh, the, the maximize the, uh, the parameter to get the, uh, the, the uh, update the, uh, the, the parameter and so on. So we actually take the derivative and then uh, get the maximum uh, the, the, of the, the parameters uh, the, based on this kind of a rule. And the, the, this part uh, the thanks to the uh, actual distribution based on the uh, marginomial or Gaussian distribution, which is very easy to uh, solve the equation. And thanks to the previous uh, the, the treatment of removing the uh, summation over the sequence, this part is actually solved by uh, the using the simple uh, the derivative uh, equation and so on. And the solution is like that. And this is also one of the hallmark. Please solve that. Please take the derivative here and then solve this kind of equation. Okay, that's a summary of today's talk. Uh, the, I use a little bit of mass uh, to uh, the, uh, the derive the uh, HMM, uh, the, the formulations and so on. This is still in the middle, but the, the, you could see that some of the kind of a nice property of how we avoid the, uh, the, the, the summation over the sequence uh, based on the various uh, trick and so on. So this is a kind of a, uh, today's talk. And uh, if you have uh, any question, I would like to accept one or two quick questions. 